welcome to the segment of eTech. Today we're working with this large power resistor which should have about 35 ohms across it. That's what the package says, but resistors can have quite a wide range of tolerance from what's actually printed on them. And so it's always good to check. This particular resistor should have 35 ohms. It's made up of five individual segments, so each of them should have about seven ohms resistance, and that's what's going to be suitable for our demonstration today. It's always good to check what you have. So I have my ohm meter set up here. I'm going to turn it on for a second. And we can see that we've got about 34.4 ohms across the full range of the resistor. And that's well within tolerance, so that'll be just fine. And then individually, let's check one segment. And it tells us that we've got 7.6 ohms, so that's also well within tolerance. What are we going to use this resistor for? Well, to really demonstrate three parts of Ohm's Law, or basic components of Ohm's Law. And the first one is that in a resistive circuit, the amount of um, current that's being consumed should rise in equal proportions as we also raise the voltage. So there should be a re linear relationship between voltage and current. Next, we also want to demonstrate another aspect that should be true of all resistive circuits, and that is the amount of power that's consumed in watts, and we'll be using this watt meter right here. The amount of power that's consumed and that's useful to us should be the same as the volts multiplied by the amps that we supply into the circuit. So we'll try to demonstrate that. And lastly, we will try to demonstrate the following. If we have resistors that are placed in series, and here we essentially have five resistors placed in series, we can use part of that resistor as a resistor bank for a partial voltage or a voltage divider. Much more often this is used in electronic circuits, but it also has application in power circuits, uh, such as some of the old motor starters. And so that's what we'll try to demonstrate today, and we'll get to it. So we have our metering set up so that we can measure volts on the left-hand side, amps on the right-hand side. Let's turn that on. And I also have a variable power supply that allows me to step up the voltage from zero uh, volts on up. And what we'll do is we'll measure voltages and currents based in 20 volt increments. And so I'll pick up the voltage to about 20 volts and we'll see what reference we get for an impacity. And so at 20 volts we get about 0.59 amps. Let's increase that to 40 volts. And we get about 1.18, 1.19. Let's increase it again to 60 volts. And we get about 1.76 amps. And let's take one more measurement at 80 volts. And at 80 volts, we get about 2.34 amps. So that gives us some data points, which we can plot on a graph to see whether or not we actually have a linear resistor. When we plot these four points on a graph, we can draw a straight line through the points and extrapolate the line to any suitable voltage. It also means that Ohm's law will work consistently. For example, at 50 volts, the current calculates to 1.45 amps using Ohm's law, and that lands directly on the line. In other words, we have a linear resistor. This time we're trying to look at power in the circuit. So we have a watt meter which measures true power or the actual power being used by the circuit. In a resistive load, that should be the same as our volts multiplied by our amps. Apparent power should equal true power. And what we'll do in this particular setup is we will uh, use some impacities that are easy to multiply by, uh, such as uh, one amp, one and a half amps, and two amps. We'll take a look at the voltage that we need to supply that ampacity and multiply it together. It should equal our watt meter. So let's see if that holds true. So I'll start to pick up the voltage. And this time around, we'll be looking at the amp meter and to get uh, some significant readings on this particular watt meter, we'll start at one amp. And so you can see the amp meter is starting to climb up toward that. And there we are. So we've got 
about one amp and about 35 volts present, just under 35 volts. One amp times 35, that should give us about 35 watts. And when we look at the dial, the major lines are uh, 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100. And the smaller lines in between are increments of 5. And when we take a look at that, that's about 35 watts. So that works out just fine. Let's pick it up to an amp and a half. And so I'm picking up the voltage again. I'm looking at the amp meter to try to see an amp and a half, 1.5 amps. And we're approaching that now. There we go. About 1.5 amps. And it gives us 52 volts. 1.5 times 52 should be about 75, 76 watts. And sure enough, our watt meter over here indicates exactly that. Let's pick it up to 2 amps. Raise our voltage again until we reach a current of 2 amps. And at 2 amps, it says that we're uh, just a shade under 70 volts, 69.5 volts. 2 times 70 is 140. And looking at our watt meter, it's registering right around 140. And so we could say that volts times amps equals watts, our true power, and that is going to be true of all purely resistive circuits. With this last setup, we want to demonstrate how seriesed resistors can be used as voltage dividers in a circuit. One of the applications was in uh, reduced voltage starting for some hard starting motors where we'd use a resistor bank to cut down the initial voltage so that the initial starting current uh, would be dropped. This particular application we have in essence five 7 ohm resistors that make up one 35 ohm resistor with individual taps that you can see in between here. What we will do is apply a source voltage across the entire resistor of 100 ohms. Now you may be wondering where this this power is going, this energy. In the last experiment we demonstrated that uh, wattage is being used and that gets turned into heat. This resistor tends to get quite warm when it's in use and so all of that electrical energy gets turned into heat. I'm going to turn the circuit on and we will have two meters. This time both of them are measuring voltage. The one on the left is going to measure the total applied voltage end to end and the meter on the right will measure the voltage as measured by my probe that I have right here and we can do a test voltage at various points along the resistor bank. Being the ungrounded or hot conductor on this side and the grounded conductor that's connected to the neutral on this side. So we should have zero volts here and 100 volts at the end. And the left meter is registering 100 volts as our applied voltage. The right hand meter is the one that I'm using to test with and it too reads about 100 volts. Now being that we have five resistors in series here, we should expect that the voltage that's dropped across each section is one-fifth of the applied voltage. In this case our applied voltage is 100 volts and so one-fifth of that is 20. In other words, if I take one section out and only measure my voltage across four of the five resistors, I should get 20 volts less. And I do. You notice that the meter reads 80 volts. The next step down, I should be able to measure that and I get about 60 volts. One more step and I get 40 volts. One more step and I get 20 volts. And so in a reduced motor starter application, we would have contactors that would first engage on the lower voltage setting and once the motor got moving a little bit a contactor and a timer would change it to the next higher voltage setting to the next higher voltage setting to the next higher voltage setting until we finally reached full voltage. The other aspect that we can demonstrate and I'll pick up the other lead here is that it really doesn't matter where in this circuit we pull voltage. 
I've got my left lead which was previously on the neutral but this time I'm going to put it here at the second interval. So I'm two resistors in from ground and I'm three resistors back from the hot side. But if I put my probes just across one resistor right in the middle of the circuit we see that it too drops one-fifth of the voltage in this case it's about 20 volts. And it doesn't matter which segment I meter individually I'm going to get 20 volts, give or take. Remember, the tolerances can be plus or minus up to 20% at times. If I include two of the resistor portions, I'm going to double my voltage across here. And so I've got 40 volts across two of them, and I would have 60 volts across three of them. And so that de demonstrates the idea of having series resistors which are able to divide the voltage amongst themselves and we can use that to get a lesser applied voltage for parts of the circuit. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.